to thank the Holland family once again. They are a true blessing to us. So, uh, they were here to turn desperate times, uh, have desperate measures. <laughs> um, we look at our world today, and uh, we should be spending hours on our knees, shouldn't we? Uh, you know, but desperation is not necessarily a, a bad thing. And, uh, you know, there are many things that drive us uh, to a point of being on our knees. Uh, and I'm not talking about the small things like trying to put together my grandkids' toys on Christmas Eve. <laughs> I don't know if you ever tried to put together a battery-operated ATV and... Uh, I missed the page where it told you how to put the wheels on the axle, and I'm saying, how does this thing work? And I laid it down three times and said, I just can't do this. And sometimes I think in life we do that too, I just think we can't do this. You know, I'm not able to continue on any longer. And my wife came over, as smart as she is, she says, open the paper and show you how to put it on. Oh. <laughs> So I did that, and that was simple after that. You know why? I read the directions. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. But this morning, uh, we're going to talk about hanging on by a thread. Uh, has anyone ever felt like that? You know, ever felt like they just uh, can't go on at the end of their rope? And uh, you know the, the term of the end of the rope, there's no rope left to hang on. But there's always an answer, and, and it's found in Christ. And this morning we're going to look at two individuals that were really at the end of their rope, and they were desperate. And I uh, questioned, uh, is there anything good that comes out of desperation? And uh, I found a number of things in the scriptures, and what it is is this. The good that is found in desperation is it drives us to Jesus. And that's what we're going to find with these two individuals. One, uh, the name is Jarius, and the other one is unnamed of a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. <coughs> and she came to the end of her rope as Jarius uh, came to the end of his rope, not knowing what to do with his daughter lies sick at home. So we're going to look at the text that's in... Mark 5, and we're going to look at verses 21 through 30, but the, the text really goes to the end of the chapter. But there's some points we want to, we want to draw from this. Uh, one of the most important points is this, that desperation does drive us to Jesus. We could go one way or the other, but how many know that he has the answers to all things? Has any of you here this morning have tried it your own way? You know, in desperation, we've, we've tried to work things out on our own, or uh, we've asked advice from ungodly counsel even at times, and uh, thought that things were going to work out correctly, but only to find ourselves in a deeper pit. Uh, I'm not saying a, a deeper pit of financial, but a deeper pit of despair. You see, and I say, well, what am I going to do? I, I just don't know where to go or what to do in this situation. How I many you know that God always has the answers for all things? Um, he has healing in His wings. You know, and, and that's not just a physical healing. He has the spiritual and emotional. He makes the whole body, mind, soul whole again as we come to Him. So let us read this portion of the text, and I hope that you follow along with me, and we could see what we can draw out of this. Mark 5, verse 21, And Jesus when he passed over by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And he besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth to the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, and she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for twelve years, and had suffered many things and many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard that Jesus is 
came and pressed behind him and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about to, in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? May God have his blessing to his holy word. <clears throat> Let us receive what the Lord has in his word for us today. Father, I humbly stand before you. And I declare, O oh God, that I need you. I need you to interpret this scripture this morning. I need you, O oh God, to allow me to be a mouthpiece, make my lips of clay like the pen of a ready writer who will inscribe on the hearts this morning your intent. And Father, we'll thank you. We'll praise you for about what about you to do. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Two individuals. We have one who was named Jairus, who was a synagogue ruler. Synagogue ruler had some prominence, was known, his name was known. This other individual, unnamed, a woman, issue of blood, 12 years, looking for healing, went to many physicians. And nothing, nothing came about for her. Matter of fact, the scripture says that she continued to get worse. Jarius had a daughter of 12 years, which tells us later in the scripture here, and the other synoptic gospels tell us early on that she was 12 years old. I thought about that for a moment, that Jarius had 12 years of joy with his daughter, this lady had 12 years of suffering from an infirmity. There was two wide or broad spectrums. Jarius, probably rich, popular. The woman, probably poor and obscure. The woman was unable to attend synagogue because of being unclean. She had the flow of blood. She was unable to fellowship. She was unable to come into public. Jarius, he was one that was uh, able to be around and, and fellowship. And, and why am I saying that? Well, what I'm saying that for is that Jesus touches and heals in fellowships with the rich and the poor alike. There's no distinction there. So what do we gather from the two in this text? First we find Jarius, the synagogue ruler, came and fell at the feet of Jesus. Desperation drives us to where? To the feet of Jesus. <laughs> Where are the answers of life itself and healing? Where? At the feet of Jesus. Both Jarius and this woman that is unnamed were driven to the feet of Jesus. Why did I give you a little background about Jarius? We all know that sometimes prominence and wealth and those things makes it hard for us to bow at the feet of Jesus. But sometimes desperation drives us that we're no longer looking around what others may think of us if something is needed and we're driven to the feet of Jesus. No longer was it concern of what the other synagogue rulers or those that were in his uh, 
line or the sphere of influence did he care about what they thought. The only thing that he cared about now was finding relief for his daughter. It's interesting that when desperation comes in, when we're at the end of our rope or we're hanging on by a thread, we could care less what others may think about us. And we're driven to the one who has all the answers. And that's exactly what you find in Jairus. He comes and falls at the feet of Jesus. And all of his prominence and pride is now put aside. Do you know that pride can keep you from kneeling at the feet of the Lord Jesus? Pride can keep you from having a relationship with God. Why do I say that? Because pride says that we're self-sufficient. Pride says that I'm going to work this out. Pride says that I don't need anyone, including God. And that will keep you from the feet of the Lord Jesus. But desperation, hallelujah, has a way of driving us to laying down our pride, saying that there is no longer anything left in me. And isn't that a good thing, is it not? Now we look at the other side of the spectrum for a moment, we see this woman with the issue of blood. She thinks to herself, I've heard of the Messiah, I've heard of Jesus, I've heard of the miracles that he has performed, and if I could just get to him. Now, what she has done really could have furthered her uh, ostrich, should have, could have further sent her deeper into despair because she was not supposed to even be in public. She was not supposed to be in contact with people. But she thought it was worth that because everything else her scorecards were zero. She's tried everything else. And you see, that's what happens to us in humanity. We'll try everything else except for the one thing where the answer is. And so we usually go through years of trying it on our own. It was a sad state to see that she went to many doctors and spent everything that she had she not only didn't get better, but the Bible says that she got worse. But wouldn't you think she was just at the end of her rope? She thought that there's one last ditch effort here. The one who has come, the one who has uh, performed miracles, he's in my reach, and I'm going to get to him. Now, she had to go through the multitude, it says. She had to push those aside. She had to crawl, per se. Because one thing I wanted you to understand again with the contrast of Jairus and this woman. Jairus confronted Jesus from the front. This woman confronted her, or Jesus, from the back. But she knew to grasp and latch on to something. And in Mark's account, it says clothe. But in Luke and Matthew, it says hem. And in the hem of a garment had some significance. Because a Jewish man wore a prayer shawl on his cloak. And they had these tassels that represented God's authority, God's commandments on those garments. And the scriptures say that that is what she grasped for. The edge of the garment, which would have been the tassel. And the Jewish, forgive me in my Hebrew, says kanaf, and that's the same interpretation for wings. Wings sometimes, and a skirt or edge is interpreted the same way. And why is that important? 
Because in the prophecies of Malachi, it says the son of righteousness shall arise and there shall be healing in his wings. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of his wings. You see, uh, there was authority by these garments, per se, not that there was a point of contact, not that it was anything magical in that, but it represented something to look at. Just like we look at the cross, just like we look at things to remember God's authority in our life, to put memorials up, per se. Those prayer shawls were uh, important to the Jewish men, and there's a lot more if you ever want to do a detailed study on that, even the way that they tie and twine the numerical numbers that lead to God, and it says to the 630 commandment, it goes on and on and on. It's an amazing study in that. But I believe that there's a, a point of this woman knowing that if she could just latch on to the authority of God, that there would be power for healing there. One other place that just talks about garment, you, you, uh, if you remember Ruth and Boaz, Boaz, when Ruth came into where Boaz was at the threshing floor, and Boaz was laying on the floor, and, and uh, Ruth came in and laid by his feet, and Ruth said, or uncovered his feet, and then she, he covered her, meaning it was an, a covering of authority. That's what that was about. It was a, a, a kind of a, a, an instrument or a, a, the word I'm looking for. It shows that it was an authority um, that Boaz would have covered Ruth, that she was coming under the wings of his household. Is what that was. The same word was used in that. If you look that up, that's in uh, Ruth 3 9 and Ruth 2 uh, 13. I say that to this. This woman crawled or pushed through the crowd so that she might grasp the end of the garment of the Lord, and guess what happened when she did? She was healed instantly. Praise the Lord. She was healed instantly, is what the scripture tells us. And it says that virtue, and I, virtue here means a, an excellence or even a moral excellence, but most translations say power. A power came from Jesus when he was touched. Now, what's important about that? Many of us are content to just be around Jesus. Many of us just like to be in the environment of Jesus. And guess what? There's no power there. Guess what? There's no power for deliverance. There's no power for joy. There's no power to praise His holy name. The only time that the power flows from Him is when we can reach out and touch Him. You see, are, are we desperate enough to reach out and touch Jesus? Are we desperate enough to bow our knee before Him? Are we desperate enough to call Him Lord and Savior? Are we too proud to say that? But I'm here to tell you if we're not desperate enough, no power is going to come into your life. If you, you keep on doing the same old things, you do what you do not want to do, you keep on being overcome by anger, and you're still the same old individual with attitudes, you're still the same uh, individual that has uh, maybe some hatred towards somebody, I'm telling you, there's no power in your life. But God wants to pour that power into you, and it only comes as we kneel before it. And the virtue, the excellence of Jesus is poured into you. It is a transfer. You see? And God places that on us. And this woman was healed. Not only was she healed, as the scripture tells us, that she has been made whole. You look at verse 34, and it says, Jesus, when he found 
and turn to her. Do you notice what it says here uh, that who touched my clothes? Do you think that Jesus didn't know who touched her, touched him? What he was doing was drawing this woman out. He was drawing her out so that she could have a profession of faith. Do you know if we don't confess his name publicly, we will never confess it privately. There are many, maybe even sitting here to say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I've never acknowledged it to anyone else. We confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. We believe it in our heart that God indeed raised him from the dead. We take his word. He says, if anyone is ashamed of me and my word in this sinful and adulterous generation, I'll be ashamed of you when I come in my Father's glory with his holy angels. Wow, that's a powerful thing. So he was drawing her out. He was drawing her into the middle of the public square to say, yeah, it is I. And guess what he says in 34? Guess what he says there? What a wonderful thing. Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. And there is that word. Full fullness. Go in peace. And be whole of thy plague. Be free. Be free. Is there anyone here who was bound up? I'm not talking just a physical infirmity. <coughs> I'm not talking about just something that you may have, uh, you know, like indigestion, that your soul is burning. God wants to set you free. But the only way is to reach out and touch the hem of his heart. You see, you come close to God, and God comes close to you. We just can't sit back any longer. If you're content for just rubbing shoulders with Jesus, because many in the multitude were rubbing shoulders with Jesus. They bumped into Jesus. But it was only the woman who grasped the hem of his glory. It was only then that the power of God started to flow. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I want to see the power of God start to flow again. Amen. Guess what the scripture says? I am the Lord and I change not. I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. There still is healing power in the wings of Almighty God for whatever you might need. But we need to reach out by faith and touch the garden of the Lord. Have you done that? Have you done that? Or are we still wandering like this woman for 12 years looking for other answers, looking for other things, But you remember last week, there's only one thing that is needed. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> that's you this morning. We want to reach out by faith. We want to touch the Lord. We want to embrace all that he has for us. Do you know that all that he has for us is yes and amen in Christ? What a wonderful thing that is. There's not only just a physical healing, but there's mental uh, healing. There's emotional healing. Then there's the relational healing. Because this woman who was ostracized now is brought back into fellowship. Hallelujah. She's able now to be back in fellowship. You know why? Because she's deemed clean. You know that how dark and black and, and, and dirty my sin was? But there is no darkness or depth or dirtiness that the Lord cannot heal and reach to and deliver from. Praise the Lord for that. And he takes one who has been in darkness, who has been ostracized by the world, one who had like leprosy. Do you know that our sin is like leprosy? That separates us from God. That we can't come into his presence. But thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. By the hem of his garment. We are invited into the presence of Almighty God. Our sins are forgiven. 
They are passed as far as east from the west. We are washed clean and made whole. The issue of blood ceases to flow. All our uncleanness is gone. And he says, although that your sins were like scarlet, they shall now be white as snow. I don't know about you, but that's good news. That is good news. You have a fresh start. This woman got a fresh start. Do you think that she was dancing in the streets? Oh, I bet you she was. I bet you she was saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm free from my infirmity. See, the problem is some of us don't even know that we're tied up. Some of us don't even know that we're bound over. Guess what it happens too when you touch the hem of the garden? We are transferred from darkness to light, from death to life, and our eyes are finally open. Many of us have been walking in darkness, and it's only light in His presence. Are you desperate enough? Can you lay down your pride enough to come to the edge of his garment? It's not the cloth. It's not the, the talik is what is called the, the cloak. It is the power from God on high that we receive by faith and trust it in the Son of God what He has done for us on Calvary. He's died on that cross so that you and I can <coughs> have a new life. I said it on Thursday evening. It is an exchange of gifts. We receive the gift of righteousness and He received our gift of unrighteousness. God placed our sin on him who knew no sin so that through him we might become the righteousness of God. I don't know about you, but that is good news. We have healing that transfers from sickness to health, from death to life, from darkness to light. Do you know if you're hanging on by a thread today, Jesus is holding the other end. He is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. If you're at the end of your rope and you know that, then just bow with me for a moment. And I'd like to have a word of prayer knowing that if you're just holding on and you ask Jesus to hold you, He will. You've never been saved, but I mean by that, never trusted Him fully. Never believe his death, burial, his resurrection. And then live for him all the days of your life. Desperation is not a bad thing. Desperation may be the only thing that is going to drive you to the feet of Christ. I think many of you here have come that way. I myself. what brought me to him. So therefore, I'm thankful. So God, as we conclude learning about Jarius, learning about this woman, by the way, Jesus did heal his daughter, if you read the end of the story. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for your word is eternal. Father, it stands firm in heaven. Father, it is true. God, we're able to build our lives on it. 
We thank you, Jesus, for saving us. If you, this morning, are at the end of your road, if you are in despair, that is not a bad place to be. Tell the Lord, by faith, you are grasping now to hold him as he holds you. Father, bless your people this day, give them your peace. Thank you, Father, for your word, your word which has encouragement to us. Thank you, Father, that you don't leave us as we are. Thank you, Lord, that you are ever drawing us unto yourself. And I pray for those in the sound of my voice today, Lord, that they also, that may reach by faith and grasp onto the one who can heal them and save them and deliver them. Jesus Christ, our Messiah. In his name we pray. Amen. God, I bless you. Yes. Stand in place. Stand in testimony. Thing. Yes. And if you're there, it's because Jesus is calling you. 